Hey, what's up? My name is Miguel Thompson. I'm a student here at the French Rock College in Canada. I study music industry arts, and here's my frequency presentation. Topic that everyone should, you know, if you're mixing, you have to understand frequency in some way. All right, so let's get into it. I'll share a little bit that I know, and yeah, hopefully it helps. So the first thing we start with, what is frequency, right? What is frequency? Now, the definition there says, frequency refers to the number of cycles that a vibration completes in one second, which is called its CSP, cycles per second measured in Hertz. Now you might be saying, but Miguel, what, what all of this fancy stuff mean? I don't know physics. Now, it's basically saying, right, we deal with music, we're musicians. So, in this diagram here, this red dot represents the starting point of the beginning of a sound wave, and obviously until it ends. So, the sound goes down, goes up, and comes back to that middle part, that middle line, which would represent one cycle. This entire down and up motion represents one cycle, right? Now, between this period and the period till that second ends, the amount of cycles that occur, right? In this case, four would tell you the frequency. That's basically it, easy peasy. So in this chart of one second, there's a frequency of four hertz or four cycles per second. See? All right. Okay, now that we understand what is frequency, now let's put it in terms of the context of music and in the context of mixing, all right? Frequency in relation to mixing. So the diagram that you see here represents the frequency, frequency spectrum division, all right? And it basically shows that the faster the vibration, the more cycles per second and the higher the pitch, right? Therefore, doubling the frequency doubles the pitch, right? Which would be an octave. And in the sense of music, right? Anytime pitch doubles, the octave doubles. It's just, the octave goes up. Simple as that, right? Now, humans can hear 20 hertz to about 20 kilohertz. That's 20,000 hertz, right? That's how wide the frequency spectrum of humans are. And it's divided into around 10 octaves, right? Which, as you can see here, you have the deep bass, low bass, mid bass, going all the way up to extremely high end, right? And with that division and with that understanding, we can now look at how instruments, where instruments fit in that entire spectrum, okay? And then we apply that to mixing, all right? So let's move on to how instruments <laughs> operate in the frequency spectrum. So instruments and the frequency spectrum. No, I will not laugh at this fish. I will try not to laugh at this fish. So, it is important to understand where general instruments sit within the frequency spectrum. Now, understanding the frequency allows you to bring out each instrument's specific characteristic in a mix. All right? This prevents them from being hidden by other instruments, which is known also as frequency masking. So for example, right, you have a bass guitar, is in, in a mix. And a bass guitar, it can get masked when you have more than one instrument that can cover the lower frequencies, right? The low end, which is the main characteristic of a bass guitar. So in terms of mixing, when you're EQing, to bring out the characteristics of the bass guitar, right? You can cut or lower the low end of those other instruments 
and that would automatically bring out the low end of the bass or vice versa you could push up the low end of the bass well that's that's a lot of low end <laughs> right and uh yes it will be heard more right as the fish says lots of bass you don't say <laughs> all right so that's basically the end of the presentation simple easy now let's move to our practical example so here we are and this is a session of mine um one of our assignments these this past semester was taking any popular song and recreating it okay so re-recording the different parts mixing trying trying to get it as close to the original and i chose the breaking free by high school musical right don't laugh <laughs> at me so we're gonna take a look at the bass guitar which i have here um duplicated and we're gonna have it in comparison to the piano and with this i'll show you how the eqing and understanding frequencies really work all right so let's let's have a listen first okay let's go All right, not bad. That's actually the final what I have so far. So let's do that demonstration. I have the bass tracks here going into a bass bus, which is right here. And on that bass bus, I have quite a bit of low end. So let me um, go back to the original. Let me mute the voices. So that's for the bass. And let's take a listen to how it sounds with its natural, how it was naturally recorded versus how it sounds with the EQ. So let's go. Okay. Yeah. So you can already tell there's a lot of low end that is lacking, right? No, no doubt, right? You could probably just push up the bass in terms of on the mix, on its, on the track, just increase the volume. But in terms of the master, the overall sound, the overall volume on the master needs to be taken into consideration. So let's just first, in, just try increasing the low end. Let's go. You can hear the difference, right? Let's let's hear the difference. Right? So just a little increase in the main characteristics of the bass, the low end, right? That bass was brought out a lot more, right? Let's take it even further. Let's cut some of the high end the natural high end that the bass may have and let's see all right so we're cutting yeah and now increase here and lower the frequency <laughs> let's let's hear the difference again Right? So just by raising the low end and cutting um, a bit of high end and high mids, the main characteristics, the heavy low end comes out a lot more. However, I, there's still some masking happening, right? And we can still get a clearer sound from the bass 
and the piano. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the piano. The piano is right here and it's going to a piano bus, which I have right here that is going to another EQ. And here, right, <laughs> let me let me make this default first so you can hear the difference. You realize suddenly the piano sounds super thin, right? The, the mid range, the high mids and the low mids of the piano, those characteristics, which is where the piano playing piano player is playing, um, are not coming out as it should. While at the same time, it's still masking a lot of the bass. So let's first start by cutting some of the low end, right? Let's go increase. Let's put it to around uh, 50 to 100 hertz. Right? Next, let's raise some of the mid ranges, the lower mids, the mid ranges and the upper mids. Let's 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 do that. So already, you can already hear the main characteristic of the piano coming out while it's not getting in the way of the bass and the other instruments, right? In a mix. Let's hear the difference now. And with that simple demonstration, we can already see how understanding the frequency spectrum of where instruments lie, how it really affects us in mixing. Because just me understanding that, okay, the characteristics of the bass, the low end, right? I want to emphasize that. So therefore, I don't want the low end of other instruments to mask that, to cover that that completely changes it for me, just understanding those simple things. So with that simple demonstration, you can already see how the relationship of instruments matter in terms of mixing and how understanding frequency really helps that. I just wanna say thank you to Chris, the Music Hacks Network for this opportunity to share the little that I know about frequency and mixing. All right, and also my dear friend uh, Danilo for providing this equipment, the software for this all to take place. So thank you.